Good morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, we're going to have a go at another line and wash of this lovely little cottage from our recent trip to Penhurst Place. Now, this was one of our outdoor painting days, which we've already had to cancel once because the weather was terrible. And even on this trip, it was a little bit dodgy, but we had a great time. So please come and join us and we'll paint this step by step together. So despite the changeable weather, we had a lovely day sketching and drawing in the beautiful grounds of Penhurst Place. So here is the reference photograph that Margot took of this little cottage within the grounds of Penhurst Place. Now, if you hang about until the end, we have a selection of paintings by the Facebook group from photos taken on the day. So please check those out. OK, so for today's materials, my paper is some Hanamula 300 pound cold press. It's 100 percent cotton, but any decent watercolour paper will do. And my colours are cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, paints grey and French ultramarine. And just two brushes from my range today, a number 12 and number 6 round. So here is my pencil sketch, which I always like to do first when I'm painting in line and wash. Now I've kept it pretty much the same, just taking out that little white sign and removing the cars through the arch. And this drawing is free to download from my website, link in the description below. So for the ink work, I'm using this Statler Lumo Color permanent black marker and trying to give the line work a nice scratchy feel with lots of character. Now, there are two schools of thought when working in line and wash. Now, I know that some artists like to paint a conventional watercolour first and then add the ink work in at the end. But I always like to do the inking first, you know, get all the hard work done first and then relax at the painting stage. I also find using cold press watercolour paper like this helps getting a nice textured broken line. Now, today's subject, Penzo's Place, has a long history and due to its exceptional condition has been used in many period TV dramas and films. The stately home and gardens were once used as a hunting lodge for King Henry VIII. Now, if you're interested, I'll put a link below to their website, which makes a really interesting read. So just making sure that all the ink work is totally dried, I'm now rubbing out all the pencil lines. Off we go, straight in with my number 12 brush and some cobalt blue, leaving gaps for the white clouds and softening some of the edges with clean water.
Then I'm going to introduce a little bit of warmth with a very watery yellow ochre on the underside of some of the clouds. And here, just dabbing out with a little tissue. Now, because the line work holds everything together, you don't have to be too accurate with your painting. It really is a nice relaxing colouring in an exercise. So I don't need to verbally tell you every colour I'm using at this stage, but I will list them below. Now, I had several people ask me recently, you say when you list the colours below, well, well, I can't seem to find them. So, when I say I'll list them below, I don't mean below in the description or in one of your desk drawers. I mean here, at the bottom of the video, down here. So I'm mixing a lot of these colours wet and wet directly on the paper. And I'll just leave that corner unpainted. I think it adds a nice little touch. So through the arch here, I'm simply painting a blurry, wet and wet nothingness, just to throw it back into the distance. Could be anything really. So for this copper beach over here, a nice wet wash going in very quickly using my number 12 brush. And then mixing in some French ultramarine to darken it to get a shadowy effect along the bottom. Now, I always like to mix my greens and I'm using my normal mix of cobalt blue and cadmium yellow, but varying the colors by adding in more and less of the blue and sometimes adding in French ultramarine to get some extra granulation. And here I'm just adding in a touch of phthalo green again to add a bit of interest and contrast. Here for these little mushroom shaped trees, I'm adding in to my mix a touch of sap green to add just that little touch of extra brightness. I think what's important with these little ornate hedges is to keep the tops lighter than the sides with an even darker value on the right shadow side.
So now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of Spitfire Kentish Ale? Okay, so now for the cottage. And again, I'll list all the colors below. Just clean water here to get a lighter value. I think it's just where the bricks have got old and have some lichen covered on them. Now this is definitely one of the advantages that cotton paper has over the cheaper pulp based papers is that it does stay wet longer allowing you more time to get those lovely wet and wet blends. Okay, so I forgot to press the record button and I've missed out this wet edge to the path. But it was just a little bit of yellow ochre mixed with some burnt umber. Next, I'm using my number six brush and adding in some final details. And try to keep these washes as transparent as possible so you still see the original color through it. And for the door here, a much darker, thicker consistency. Now I've just realized I've missed out the water lilies in the pond here, so I'll just quickly add them in while no one's looking. Now for the pond itself, it's a very dark value, so I'm using my usual green mix, but adding in some strong Payne's Grey.
and while it's still wet, lifting out with a damp brush a few vertical bands. And then dropping in wet in wet some strong paints grey along the edge and a few vertical bands. Ok, so pretty much the painting stage is over, so I'm coming back in with my pen to strengthen a few lines and add in some further details. And this is probably my favourite bit. And then the final touch with some gooey white gouache straight from the tube for these little white highlights. Here's the thing, in the photo reference there's a little cluster of vegetation here in the corner that originally I wasn't going to include, but I think it will balance the composition out a touch as it's tending to look a little left heavy. So back in with my black pen, nice and quick and scratchy. then in with various shades of green. Yep, I think that works. There we go, all done in just under three hours.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. And just remember, you don't have to do it as a line and wash. You can do it just as a conventional watercolour. It'll work either way. So coming up now, as promised, are some further paintings of Penser's Place from the Facebook group. So please check them out. There's some lovely paintings there. And just a quick mention, there won't be a tutorial next week because I'm off on my cycling holiday with my friends, but we'll be back in two weeks time. So as ever, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. It is free. Leave a comment. I do read every single one, though I can't reply to them all. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for a, or two weeks time for another Watercolour Wednesday. Take care now, everyone. Bye for now.